Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. In today's episode, we discuss how to know if your treasury technology is up to date with Katya Franz. Katya is a senior treasury management professional currently leading the global treasury advisory at Deloitte, and she's a specialist in treasury technology. Deloitte is a global leader in professional services that provides financial advisory, legal services, and consulting solutions for businesses worldwide, but you guys already know that. In this episode, we discuss why regular treasury technology reviews are crucial for staying current, how to spot and fix key pain points in treasury systems, the role of benchmarking against industry best practices, quick wins and long-term strategies for improving treasury functions, signs that it might be time to upgrade your TMS, and of course, much, much more. Now, just a quick word about the AFP. We've been doing this podcast for two years and a half now. And the most listened to episodes are always the ones talking about career and certifications in treasury. It's the stuff that you guys absolutely love. So we've partnered up with the AFP, the Association for Finance Professionals. And so we can offer you a hundred dollar discount on all of the AFP products. And yes, this includes, of course, the CTP, Certified Treasury Professional, which is hands down the most renowned and recognized certification in treasury out there, as well as their prep course. All you have to do is check out the link in the description, uh, which will take you to the website where you can use our discount codes for whatever product you are looking to buy. And with all that being said, please welcome Katya Franz. Gotcha. Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. Thanks, Lusam. Great to be here. Great to have Deloitte back on. Um, so we're going to go over a lot of cool topics today, specifically around treasury technology and just like the challenges and everything a treasury department has to go through in keeping their treasury technology up to date and up to speed. So with that in mind, the first step, I guess, is reviewing where you are right now, right? So could you take us through what is the proper way to review your treasury technology and understand just where you are today? It's a very good question. And it's not that easy to stick with just the topic of treasury technology because it's sort of all related. Yeah. Not only in treasury, whenever we talk about technology, it's actually, it's not a self-purpose. It's all about process as well and your setup. So when we talk about the treasury technology review, we typically get started talking also about processes, about requirements, about the organizational setup, about the operating model, things like that. So it's more like a full overview, 360 degrees or whatever you want to call it. But the focus is on technology. And since I'm like responsible for treasury technology advisory, that's typically also the initial question that I get, what, like what is the correct or the best TMS for us? Are we using our TMS correctly? Is this still a good system? So that's the starting question. But in the end, we always talk processes, requirements, things like that. So we can, depending on where the initial question was, the review can be smaller or bigger and more focused on technology processes or broader going also to organizational topics. So break down the main components of a comprehensive treasury review. In terms of the process and anti landscape that uh, you mentioned there, you mentioned organization. That's, I'm sure, a really important part of it. So it's really interesting to maybe talk about how the organizational layout influences the technology and perhaps even vice versa. I would assume you want the technology to be an outcome of the organization as opposed to the other way around. Yes, I think it probably that, yeah. It goes hand in hand, sort of, because you evolve as an organization, right? Your team will not stay the way it is. Your technology will not stay the way it was set up originally. So it goes hand in hand. But ideally, there is a good fit. And obviously, when you're a very small organization with a very small team, you cannot implement something very complicated, very complex, because you just don't have the manpower. And you, in the end, you also don't have the ability to cover all those different roles that you might involve, like a proper front office, middle office, back office split or anything like that. So you would 
need to drill that down a bit or get that a bit easier, smoother, so you can actually cover that with a small organization. And the other way, if you're a huge team, something very small and simple and standardized in a very, perhaps even very complex organization, this will not work either way. So the question, what I typically tell, like it's a typical consultant answer when clients ask me, what is the best DMS for me? It depends. So we need to look at the, the organization first. So And usually when we are asked that to look into that in a review, we don't do a reorganization stuff, a downsizing of the team or whatever. It's more about enabling the client to really spend time on the important stuff. Okay. Sounds good. So that's really interesting indeed. I mean, size is obviously a big part of that. What's the impact of the like banking landscape on understanding your technology review? Yeah, I mean, it depends a bit on in which markets are you, in which currencies are you, what is your banking landscape? Does it need to be that big? Do you have a lot of, I don't know, trade finance deals where you typically have a lot of local institutions that are involved? Do you also do payments with them? Or is it just like, do you have like really transaction banking coverage only? That's something that yeah drives a bit the decision also on how you want to set things up. Do you want one system that does it all? Or do you go with specialized systems? It's actually not only working for the banking landscape, it's also for all the other areas involved. Yeah, Do you need a specialized system for trade finance, for commodities, for whatever, or does the TMS cover your own requirements in a very good way? Makes a lot of sense. In terms of the IT landscape overview, that was one of the pillars that you mentioned earlier as well. Yep. So how would someone review that without a consultant, let's say, like yourself? That's probably the important thing. You can do it on your own. You should do it regularly and you don't always need to involve someone from the external side. Um, you should look at like or draw a picture of your system landscape and your interfaces and then really look at the, what is being done in which system, where are interfaces, which departments are involved, which people are involved, why are things done in a certain way and has something changed from when we first did this setup? Because, I mean, that's the key question or that's the key reason for the review when you implement a system, you do it for the requirements that you have in that point in time and you define the must-haves and nice-to-haves just based on your current status. So when you look at it a few years later and your organization has developed, your team has developed, the systems have developed, yeah, everything has sort of changed and moved forward. And then it makes sense to look at it and say, why are we still doing this? Is this a task that someone brought along from a previous role in the company and it's not really a treasury task? Why are we focusing on that topic? It's not important for us any longer. Why are we doing this manually? This could already be automated. So there, there are a lot of topics that you, with a bit of experience, can already see from a flowchart of your processes, of your IT systems, of your interfaces. It's sometimes hard to get to that picture because... Yeah, obviously, we're talking about exactly the interface between the treasury department and the IT department, and one might not be so good in the other topic, so they need to talk, unless you have like a proper treasury IT that happens, but it's still not the most predominant setup, I'd say. Interesting indeed. And how often do you think people, you, you mentioned that that should be something that's regularly assessed. What's your recommendation for how often it should be assessed and why that frequency? Or is it triggered by a change? That's a good point. I'd say, well, a transformation or a change in the organization is always a trigger. And typically the organization or the treasury team already gets that trigger. So they know, they notice something has changed here. We need to adopt. We need to look at, at things. We need to look at our setup. So huge transformational changes, they will trigger that impulse to amend things. Also changes in the, I don't know, I, overall IT strategy perhaps, yes, will trigger that because a few years back, a few companies that were really on-prem hosted systems only lifted their cloud ban. And then obviously that moves, that opens up opportunities for the treasury team, opens up a new landscape of availability of available systems. Yeah. So that's an easy trigger point. But I'd say regularly in a sense of, yeah, not constantly, because if you constantly change things, that will lead to 
you have a system here and there and you amend something little in that point and in that direction and in that topic. And that leads up to often it can lead up to the very patchwork style IT landscape. And then you have a lot of system breaks, a lot of interfaces. That is always also a risk. Yeah. So it's more regularly looking at things and perhaps only starting with has something important changed out of the like our foundation? Did we move into a new country? Did we buy a company that has a different business model? Did we did something happen in the team that triggered a change? Did we grow? Did we yeah? Suddenly there is interest risk. Yeah, that's also like a, a macroeconomical change that can lead to you saying okay. We never cared about how our interest deals are captured in the TMS. We should look at that. Yeah, we start, we should, or we captured them, but we never really reported them. So we should have a look. Yeah. So there are a lot of small things and yeah, the, the, there is no really proper frequency, but like an annual or every two year small review is definitely what I'd recommend. And I'm not talking about hiring an external consultant every year to, to have a look at that. It, you can do a lot of that. On your own, when there are bigger changes needed, it might make sense to get some external perspective, obviously. So I like that insight. What you mentioned there is that it's not just so company change or business change. That makes a lot of sense. And I think that's what people would typically say, okay, time to review our, review our treasure technology. But you mentioned there about policy change as well. So if your company implements a policy change, so you mentioned there about a few years ago, a lot of companies all of a sudden lifted their cloud ban. Right, which was I was in still the corporate world when that happened. All of a sudden, we're using like that like, you know, USBs are banned now, and we're just using drives and and all this kind of stuff. And that also tends to trigger like, okay, what other opportunities are there that this new policy has enabled, where the technology was always there, but we just weren't allowed to use it. Right, that's a really interesting one. It happens quite frequently, and it opens up also a lot of risks, obviously, but also a lot of opportunities how to connect to other systems, how to perhaps stick with your original system and just tweak things or add yeah, strategic import missing parts or important parts and add that to your setup. And interfaces are getting better too. So like the technological developments, like the absolute speed of technological improvements that we're seeing since years and that also keeps constantly, even if you're already in the cloud, it keeps constantly bringing up new opportunities. But that's what people talk about more on treasury conventions, right? IT policy change is usually not that big of a topic. Yeah? But it's a, it's a typical trigger that we see when people reach out to us. Yeah? So can you take us to like the other side of the, we say in the energy chart, the negative side. So if a treasury department isn't diligent in reviewing Internally, every one or two years, treasury IT or treasury technology landscape, what are the potential downsides or risks of not being up to speed with technology and processes? I'd say it's the probably it's a huge risk that you're in disabling your speed. Yeah. You prevent yourself from really being able to react quickly on market changes, on any impacts, yeah, unforeseen events. We've seen a lot of those in the past uh, years. But also it's there is a, I would label it a high cost that can come out of it. Yeah. Because if you don't look at your system regularly and your requirements change and people start implementing workarounds because they think the system cannot do it or the requirements change, we didn't implement, I don't know, trade finance in our system because it was not important for us at the time. We only had three deals and we didn't capture them. And then you start implementing like those big, you probably have seen that as well in the corporate world, these huge Excel monster spreadsheets appear and people start tweaking things and suddenly information is outside of the system that should be inside of the system. And everybody in the company is convinced the system cannot do it. And also for other things, there are manual workarounds because something was not properly implemented at the time because it was not in the center of attention, but now it is. And the workaround is just causing manual effort, risk of errors, and really annoys everybody in the company, then in the end, you might come to the conclusion as a treasury team, we need a new system because you won't, everybody in the company is annoyed by that system. And they think the system is the reason for not having stuff implemented correctly. Whereas 
a quick and easy and not so high cost solution would be to just amend things in the existing setup and like properly re-implement something or an implementation in the existing system. But you cannot roll that out anymore because the system is sort of burnt. You know uh, what I mean? So everybody is annoyed by the system and everybody wants something new, but in fact, there is no need. Yeah? Hey. As I earn my money with also with TMS selection uh, projects, uh, that's good for me. I'm definitely not saying that every selection project is nonsense, yeah? but it's sometimes there is an easy fix and then it, it's always nice to or better to start with a review project and then come to the conclusion can we fix something in the existing setup and is this still good for us or do we move on to a new system but if you have not reviewed for multiple years and everybody is already annoyed you only have that one way to go and implementing a new system it's high cost and high effort yeah everybody knows so it's uh, usually not that easy a process especially when you have like a really well-established and long-term built IT landscape. I like that insight about people will typically compensate for what they feel like is missing in the system, whereas new systems or even updates to existing systems might have those fixes in there. What that leads to is people creating their workarounds for it, and then all of a sudden, a lot of information is off the system, right? Because what they do is they take a number from there it goes into an Excel sheet. They do all the different calculations and scenario analysis in the Excel spreadsheet. And then it comes back into the system at the end. And then it's just a mess because like someone else comes in and it's like they don't have the middle step because it wasn't in the system. Um, whereas newer versions would probably have that. There's also this rise of SaaS in the world, right? Where you can usually find a lot of um, workarounds or even like plugins, add-ons, um, APIs which work with your current systems. I mean, if I'm thinking if you have SAP, I mean, every single SaaS out there integrates with SAP nowadays. And so that's also a really large opportunity as well, right? What do you make of the SaaS market and how that's influencing this? Yeah, it gives a lot of flexibility also for the treasury department. When we're thinking of an on-prem setup, you need to queue for all the changes. You need to not only look at your vendor, when do they roll out a new release, but you need to find a, skip, a point in time where your IT has time to roll that out, where someone really takes care of that. So you create delays. So that in the SaaS market, you're much, much, much closer to the system. That doesn't give you operationally more time to really look at the act all the changes that the SaaS solutions do roll out because they are also very busy in improving their systems, but it gives you a more standardized setup. Yeah. So there are less customizations than in the on-prem world typically, and you get new releases quicker in a standard cycle and um, you are sort of, yeah, forced to review things on your own unless you have like a service agreement with the vendor. Um, that helps you on that, but it opens up a lot of opportunities, but there are often also missed because like everybody gets a lot of emails, you're stuck in your daily business, then your vendor sends emails with release notes, so you look at them, you see the new features, but you don't really make the connection to your own world, to your own process world, because it's not, it's standardized documentation, right? It's not per se in your wording, it's not per se in the terminology that you're used to. Um, so you perhaps oversee that there is something in it for you and then, yeah, you miss out on certain features. So this is, it's giving you a lot of opportunity to develop, but it also, you need to be active to really take advantage of this. It makes a lot of sense. So Katja, imagine that I'm a treasurer or I work in a treasury department at the very least and we've conducted our internal review we're in the last landscape and we've decided that our systems are out of date. It's giving us lots of cost and we've been able to secure budget for an update. What would be the first steps if I brought in someone like yourself of reviewing in depth the entire process? And how would you, could you walk us through the typical steps involved in conducting a treasury review? Basically, there are uh, several starting points. I'll start with the very first one. So when you have done your initial analysis as a team and you are not really confident that you got all the details right, then we can start at that very point and review your analysis and include that review also in our 
project. If you are quite confident and you already know this is why we are having trouble here and there and there, then we can use those items as focus points in our project and just look at that. Yeah. But the recommendation obviously is to start with a prop to let us as external consultants or not necessarily us an external consultant uh, start with like the proper as is analysis. That means passing on all the information that you have. Yeah? We typically would start with a joint workshop because a lot of information is just transported while describing what you're currently doing, even sometimes without the client noticing that they're giving out or already the hints on what their pain points are and where their setup might not be right. After the workshops, like or after the initial workshop, kickoff workshop, we would do like a desktop analysis of all the documentation that's there. The treasury policy, process description, guidelines. If you have a list of pain points, perfect. If you have a list of requirements for a TMS or for a system, even better. And then we would sort of benchmark that to what do we expect that customer or that client to be doing when we compare it to our standardized or our treasury target operating model taxonomy, when we compare it to what we believe is a good setup and where are their gaps, where are their fits. And then we try to yeah do like a fit gap analysis and, and come up with a an assessment of what is your level of professionalization or what is your yeah best practice is always a difficult word i think but where are you very good compared to the what we see in the market and where are you perhaps not so good and have some opportunities for development and both sides are important because it's also important to know where you're really good yeah because you don't need to spend your time on improving things where you're already quite good and it's perhaps a bit strange for you to hear but sometimes customers don't understand where they're really good because they always they might be comparing themselves to the wrong peers right they hear somebody speak at a treasury event or in a podcast and then they will think well I don't have a system for this and that or I'm not doing it automatically I'm not doing this or that we should definitely look into it. And in, but in their world, their world is perhaps completely different because they're, I don't know, they're only in the Eurozone or what, whatever. So they, they, they might have differentiators and they don't actually need that specific thing. So they're very good. And then they can spend their time on something else. Yeah. So it's not only the development areas, also looking at the well developed areas and saying that this is already good. To you, it's not important for you to spend time on tweaking things there. Yeah. This important part we didn't really talk about much, which is benchmarking. What, like, how do you, if we go rewind back to before the professional consultants come in, what are the ways that, like, the average treasurer can benchmark on their IT infrastructure well? Do you have any, like, are there any, like, open source ways of doing that? Nowadays, I'd probably ask ChatGPT. Yeah, there is no good open source thing that I know of, actually. So if anybody has information, yeah, please share. I'd say talk to people, yeah. Go into conversation, go to treasury events. If you hear something that's interesting, talk with the people who present at a, a conference. They're usually available afterwards. Talk to them, ask them. Your peers know a lot. Everybody thinks that their processes are very standard, but their pain points are very unique, which is not true. It not necessarily true. It's very often the pain points are quite similar across the companies that we see. So talk to each other and try to to make use of the information that's out there. I mean, it's probably the problem today that there is too much information and it's hard to find it. So stay in. I mean, like there are a lot of system vendors who host client events. There are a lot of smaller events for treasury communities where you have a better opportunity to touch base with peers than in like a huge I don't know, Euro finance event or so, because that's just, there are so many people, but that's my recommendation. And also the external consultants, they're also available for a chat. They don't always sell a project, right? They sometimes just chat. Yeah. I think one of the things that I found powerful in my like automation journeys across different roles I've had is you can usually know which parts are just costing you a lot of time and money and which parts are really simple for you. And maybe going from a problem, starting with the problems, be like, yeah, this process is just incredibly manual. There must be a better way, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't know what the better way is. But nowadays, I mean, I can't think of many automation problems that can't be solved, either with a specific yep. answer 
there used to be a time where just like, okay, there's no way to automate this. Simple as that. Yep. And so we have to do it manually or there's no way to do this in a better way. But nowadays we can build, you know, you can build almost anything. We have uh, our good friends at Automation Boutique. I mean, they, they do this ben. amazingly. They come in, they understand exactly what can be automated, what can't be, and um, what has a general solution, what you have to build something custom for and help you do it. But the starting with the pain point seems like the obvious route, as opposed to just being like, all these tools are out there. I should start with that. And then like the treasury associations are also a great route for that, right? Where it's like, I have this problem. How are you guys doing it? Right? As opposed to just going after the technology. What do you think about that? Definitely. I mean, we see a lot of companies building their own automations in the background of systems, but the systems are also developing more and more and the systems are much easier to connect nowadays. You already mentioned APIs. Yeah. So it's much easier to get that and it's good. And also, again, talk to your peers and the Treasury Association is a good point where you can, a good place where you can find your peers. They usually do share. They don't the treasurers, they don't feel as competition, right? So they usually don't tell you what they have automated. They will tell you what they did and how they did it and give you hints in what direction to look or which partners you can work with. There are, I mean, the world is big, that the market is evolving. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, vendors out there. There are a lot of new systems, like also the automation boutique that you just mentioned, new vendors or fintechs creating new opportunities. And you sometimes are just not aware of them. Yeah. And it's not easy to have your ears everywhere. Yeah. So it's uh, just start and with the closest point. Yeah. You got to do your day job as well, right? I guess at the same time. So That's it. It gets That's very difficult. It. So there's not too many great ways for someone to do it by themselves other than asking around problem, starting with the problem. How do you guys benchmark a company's treasury practices against industry best practices and recent developments when you come in? Obviously, again, if there is documentation, we look at the documentation. Or even if there is documentation, we still talk to the process owners. We also talk to the product owners. And uh, ideally, it depends a bit on the size of the project and the budget, how many processes we are actually looking at. Um, but ideally, we also do talk to the people who execute the processes because that's like we do process walkthroughs and look at things to really get an idea. So we go level four level five on the process side to really see are the processes that we expect in that environment? Are, is the process there? Is it manual? If it's not there, is it not there for a reason? Or was it just not implemented and someone has a spreadsheet somewhere? Which systems are used for it? Which people are involved in it? Are there any interfaces to or from outside systems? You can Get that already from like the chart that I just mentioned as the starting point earlier that you really see, okay, this is my, my starting point, my, my flow chart or my IT landscape chart. But from there, you can really look at things in detail. And when we do our assessment, then we you typically do that on a higher level. So we don't look into each process and say, this is a better process than the rest, but we will more level two, probably than on the level saying. Your cash management practice is already good, but on the payment side, there are certain areas where there is risk involved because there is something being done manually or, yeah, just as an example. So, sorry, Kasia, this is Corporate Treasury 101. So, I'm going to ask you to, to dumb it down a little bit for me. Um, what do you mean by level one? Or can you explain the levels like of, of process? Yes, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. So typically we go in the in treasury or the target operating model terms. Yeah, We go into looking at level one, uh, which is, is treasury risk management or is this uh, more asset liability management? Is this really treasury or is this treasury IT? So you have your yeah, departments, in fact. And then below that, you have the level level two processes that can be also something very generic like treasury strategy and administration now yeah, that can also that that goes to cash management that goes to financial risk management and then obviously you already might guess that exactly this varies from organization to organization so sometimes payments might be in cash management sometimes payment might be already on the level 2 and then we actually drill down and then in the end, level four or five, you really have the detailed process who's doing what in the system. Yeah, that's, so that's hopefully a simple way to describe it. And um, if not, feel free to reach out and ask again if someone out there didn't get my explanation. No, of course. So you would go through the different 
levels processes starting very yep. high level right um yep. on the operating model or tom taxonomy yep. i think you mentioned and then go deeper and deeper as, as time goes on and you identify yep. the right places and start benchmarking accordingly what are some of the outcomes of a comprehensive treasury review like what are you aiming to do at the end of the review because i mean yep. theory is great but action is the important part Absolutely right. What we aim to do is come up with a not only the assessment or the benchmark, because it's nice to know where you're good or where you're not so good yet. But the thing is, where are my development areas? What initiatives yeah, can I actually do? What actions can I take to fix this? And then in the end, what effort will be involved or might be involved if I start fixing this? And is there a chronological order that will help me to do this in a way where it is not yeah, just duplication of efforts because I'm touching things twice or three times because I'm doing it just in the wrong order. So in the end, we're talking about a treasury roadmap. So like a portfolio of initiatives or one big overall initiative is probably a better way to put it. Um, that really is like the framework of where you want to go mid to long term. And in that, we try to build in all the initiatives, all the action items. I'm not, when I say action items here, I do not mean like task level. I really mean more like separate initiatives, uh, smaller initiatives. What can be fixed quickly? What can perhaps be a quick win on the back of an already existing initiative? And um, what can we do independently from all the rest when we have time? What urgently does need to be fixed because there is high risk involved what does need to be what is not so urgent and can be done at a later stage and then put that in a chronological order that will help you yeah so basically tackling the change more strategically yeah so not only making time available in the treasury team to really step back from being only operational and spend time on strategical tasks but also looking at the changes and the transformation, basically transformation process and in a more strategic way and really have like, yeah, as a means of change management, actually have like one big treasury roadmap on top of that. So to give everybody guidance, why they're actually doing what they're doing. Yeah? Why is this initiative being done now and not something else? Then the point, we haven't really talked about the people involved in the change or the prioritization or the tasks itself. I guess that's a really important role about any technology, right? Technology at the end of the day, we're not quite at the stage yep. yet where AI can do all of it and we still need some people around. How does that factor into that prioritization or assessment level on actions? It's a huge factor, right? You only have the people you have, right? And there are two aspects on that. First aspect is you need to make sure that they still have time for their operational work, for the actual treasury work. and are not overloaded and especially not constantly overloaded. And the second aspect is another, yeah, basically also an overload. If there is too much change, all the change is also something that can be very hard for a, for a person, for a team or for the whole organization. So yeah, being constantly stressed because you're working on multiple projects at a time and you have to do your daily business is one point, but the constant pressure basically of change and personally i do like change a lot but when things change i still feel stressed yeah? so it's uh, something that you should consider and that's why change management is important not only in implementation projects but also in looking at it in more like from an organizational development perspective in the treasury department that you really make your people aware why they are doing things and why you are doing a certain initiative now why this is urgent compared to other things who are not urgent. So it's like giving them a sense and a better understanding of what they're doing helps them to understand where you want to be going with the team. Yeah. You mentioned a few times repeatedly and with a bit of emphasis, Katja, that why are we doing it now? Is that common? Like question slash like pushback? You know, I thought of my career as well in a, what, not in a corporate but in a bank with a lot of projects and sometimes when you're not very far up the hierarchy you just think why are we doing this now this is not the most urgent thing i have 10 things on my desk 
that really annoy me every day. Why are we fixing this? Yeah. And I mean, everybody only sees his small desk and yeah? his piece of work. In treasury, the desk is sometimes very big because the tasks that you have are very widespread and very broad. Yeah. So you have a, a wide area of topics that you, you need to be covering. So you might have a good overview of what's going on. Um, but still to understand why is this change coming? Why are we doing this now? Why was this more important than something else? And perhaps the answer is it wasn't more important. It's just the first step because we need to get this right before we start the really important stuff. That can also be the reason. Yes? And sometimes it's just important when you do a project. And I've, I mean, I've done some implementation project in my work life already. Sometimes it's so clear to you that what you're doing and why you're doing it that you don't really talk about it and then you lose the backup from or the backing in the organization because they don't understand what you want to be doing and where you want to to be going so that's a change management is actually very important especially with all the changes yeah like organizations go through a lot of changes yeah not only in in treasury very interesting so let's move into the implementation phase catcher so once we're deciding okay we are going to implement a change in our technology um, and the review is complete. Ideally, I mean, any good change management is get some quick wins in, right? Because you want to yep. make sure that, again, it motivates the people, it improves morale, starts garnering momentum. What are yep. some quick wins that companies can implement to see immediate improvements typically? I have to go again with, it depends. No, but typically, I mean, aut- we, you mentioned it already, automation. Yeah, automation. And there are a lot of small things that can be automated easily. Yeah, because in just many cases, the automation is already available in that specific system and it's just hasn't been done back in the days when the implementation was done and then it was sort of forgotten. Another quick win is if you really want to go down the route of we keep our existing system, yeah, then one of the quick wins typically is, okay, we find that Excel spreadsheet and we start capturing all the deals that are not inside the system now in there. It's not as quick as doing an automation, perhaps, because you need to look at, check your static data. Is everything there? Look at how you want to end things up in reporting later on before you can actually implement something. But it's still, it's not a very big project and it can be done by a few people yeah, because the, the Excel spreadsheet typically is also not maintained by the, by the whole team, but it's just um, here. Like one, one is mainly responsible and they can do that as well. So those are typically quick wins. And then also things like what sometimes comes up in reviews are like security topics. Yeah. So my security concept was for a team of three. So everybody had the same user role. Now we're 10 people. Everybody still has the same user role. So the same person who creates the static data also sends and signs the payment and does the FX deals and whatever. So no segregation of duties. We need to fix something in the system that can typically be done very, very quickly. Yeah. That sounds like an important quick win, indeed. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're risk managers in the end, right? So it's, yeah. um, so in, in a situation where you need the bigger stuff, so something like even a TMS, um. The company still also needs to be ready to be able to implement a TMS, right? So how do you assess if a company is ready for that kind of change? That's a tricky question because we typically, we come in from the treasury side of things, right? So we we don't always have contact to the whole organization. But as I said, if we are just starting from the treasury perspective and from the treasury team, if they have a good idea of what is currently not working really well, where do they want to be going? Where are their pain points? And they can really, they already have a, an idea of their requirement or a very good understanding of their requirements. Then they can typically also better explain within their organization and communicate within their organization why they need a new system and prove that they not just only want a new system. Yeah. That's also important. I mean, you need a budget, yeah? first and foremost. So you need to be talking to the CFO, the CEO, purchasing the department. So you might, you need a good reasoning, which well, it shouldn't be too treasury nerdy, um, but it, it should, you should still be able to really prove 
that's probably the key point, proof that you really need this. And sometimes for this reasoning, also you need external help or you, you think you need external help. And sometimes it's just a good communication strategy within the company. But that's when I come in or me and my colleagues come in into an organization, talking, it's probably easy talking and listening to the people is already gives you a very, very good idea. This will be a project where there will be a lot of efforts that needs to go into yeah, communication or change management or whether that it's an organization that you need to slow down because they want to change everything in one go. Yeah, that's um, has been seen as well already. Yeah. Makes they a lot are of sense. Out there. Awesome. Gotcha. Thank you so much for coming on and talking us through change largely, especially as it relates to technology. Before we wrap up, do you have any final advice for treasurers looking to ensure that their technology and processes are up to date? I probably said it in bits and pieces already before, but like talk to your team, listen to your team because they already know what's bothering them and you get a good understanding of what's wrong yeah? and talk also to your business yeah? because if the business changes and you didn't see that change coming, that will put some pressure on you and the team as well. So it's good to like that. We hear that a lot as well, uh, Treasury as the business advisor. Um, yeah. So play, play that role. Um, go into the organization and communicate. And, um, yeah, also talk to your peers. That's, I mean, it sounds as if we were not doing anything else in strategy but talk. Uh, but if you really want to do something, if you need the information and you get that from the people who actually do the job now in your organization, who plan where your organization will be going and someone who has done it, it is probably among your peers. Try to use those sources. And uh, yeah, if you feel the need to have external help, reach out. <laughs> and then on that note too. Listeners want to learn more about you and the services Delight Germany offers in treasury management. Where do they go and how do they reach out? Look at us on the internet, Deloitte Germany. So we have a Deloitte Treasury has a website for Germany and you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. We not only do treasury technology, so I'm part of a bigger team. We're very generalistically set up. We have people looking into treasury strategy and transformation. We have audit, treasury accounting, financial risk management with specialists pretty much for everything and a bunch of generalists and um, apart from like the treasury technology team where I'm focusing really on the TMS side with with some colleagues we also do have a team for SAP treasury so this is like it's a huge topic so there are some specialists there as well so it's quite broad what we can do and in my technology piece I actually cover everything from the review process, what we, we call it health check, treasury health check, and TMS selection projects, as well as then implementations for various vendors, yeah, for various treasury management systems. Makes a lot of sense. Gotcha. Thank you so much. All the uh, links and relevant information will be in the show notes. And great to have Deloitte back on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Susan. <laughs>